Police Commissioner also known as the Commissioner of Police, is a senior rank in many police forces of the world. In other jurisdictions, it is the title of a member of an oversight board. Police commissioners may be experienced police officers, though some are politically appointed, or elected civilians not sworn police officers. In such cases, usually a professional chief of police is in charge of day-to-day -day operations. In either event, commissioners are the designated heads of the organizations. In police services of the UK, Commonwealth and United States, the title of commissioner may designate the head of an entire police force, or a member of an oversight board of police commissioners. A police commissioner should not be confused with a police commissary. In France, Spain and some Latin American countries commissary denotes the head of a single police station. However titles such as commissaire in French, and commissario in Spanish can mean either commissioner or commissary in English, depending on the context. The role of a police and crime commissioner is to be the voice of the people in policing, and to hold the chief constable to account for how he she discharges their functions. The aim of all is to ensure the delivery of an effective and efficient police service within their force area. Mohamed Mustafa Tibet was born in 1949 in Beni Mello, Morocco. After graduating high school in 1970, he worked as an Arabic teacher before enrolling in the police academy in Kenifra in 1974. Tibet entered the Rensainments Gainero, Morocco's police intelligence agency, in 1975. By 1989, he had become the head of the Casablanca Bureau of the RG. He gained the reputation of a highly religious man, and gained the nickname of High Tibet following his pilgrimage to Mecca. According to a victim, he reportedly interrupted his rapes after hearing the call to prayer, and continued raping the woman after praying. Tibet had also gained infamy amongst locals due to the numerous complaints lodged against him predominantly by young women and girls, that he had approached them in his car, kidnapped and raped them at his apartment. Rumors claimed that Tibet used his position to cover up his crimes, and his colleagues in the police force often destroyed any evidence to prevent charges being brought against him. Tibet usually assured his victims that he could get them high fee the next day to keep their virginity. Tibet had been married twice and had five children. It was reported by Telquel that Tibet often had depressive episodes, and an inferiority complex. Tibet allegedly felt a need to prove his masculinity. In 1990, a woman and her girlfriend were reported to have filed a complaint for rape and kidnapping to local police in the Hema Hermati district of Casablanca against someone calling themselves Hai Hamid. Police found inconsistencies in her story, The women admitted that they were not kidnapped. Hai Hamid allegedly told the women that the act was videotaped, and promised to give them a copy by Eid al fitr Hai Hamid was quickly identified as Mustafa Tibet by policemen, however, it was discovered Tibet were the investigating officers' supervisors. Police officers tried to convince the women to drop charges to no avail. The women filed another complaint to a different police station, only for the complaint to get ignored. In August 1992, a Moroccan student in Milan recognized his sister while watching a pornographic video cassette with his friends. The student went back to Casablanca the next day in search of answers. After confronting his family with the tape, he found out that the sister met someone calling themselves High in 1991. Afterwards, the student found where High lived. He ended up going to High's apartment to meet his sister. After spotting his sister entering the house, he was quickly arrested and arbitrarily detained. The student was freed the next day, 
He rented a new car and kidnapped his sister while on his way to High's house. He filmed his sister's confession and version of the story and, as an Italian citizen, the student sent the videotape to the Italian embassy, who relayed it to the Prime Minister's office. After Prime Minister Abdelatif Filali received a copy of the video, he relayed it to the King of Morocco, Hassan II. Hassan, who was planning a police reform, ordered an immediate investigation and a secret investigation cell was opened by the Royal Gendarmerie. On February 2, 1993, the Royal Gendarmerie, without informing the police and without a warrant, decided to raid Tibet's house. During the raid, they found and seized two remote control video cameras, two microphones hidden under the bed, identity cards of women, cocaine, 118 videotapes featuring victims having intercourse with Tibet, sometimes with other men, and a list consisting of the names and addresses of dozens of women on Tibet's computer. Tibet was taken into custody after four days as a fugitive for interrogation and was allegedly subject to torture and beatings. His wife and children, who lived in another house, denied any knowledge of his crimes. The gendarmerie counted 518 victims, but speculated that the number of victims could be as high as 600 to 1200, including minors. The public prosecutor of Casablanca later described the tapes as not only pornographic recordings, but the most horrific recordings in the history of humanity while the Moroccan press named the case one of the worst examples of police corruption and cover-ups in the country's history. He had edited the tapes as he had filmed multiple angles of his rapes. He also created a compilation of what he considered to be the best parts of his collection. The tape was simply labeled 32. The 32 tape was alleged to contain several Moroccan notables high-ranking officers and politicians having sex with his victims. The contents of the tape officially remain unknown. The same officers also claimed that Tibet sold some of the compilations overseas for financial profit. On February 18, 1993, Tibet's trial started. The trial was held in camera during Ramadan. He was charged with indecent assault, defloration, rape with violence, abduction, and sequestration of a married woman, acts of barbarism and incitement to debauchery, falsification and destruction of evidence in front of the criminal chamber of the Court of Appeal in Casablanca. On March 15, 1993, Mustafa Tibet was found guilty on all charges and sentenced to death by firing squad. 30 other accomplices were sentenced from 5 months to 20 years in prison. Tibet's superior officer, Amadou Ashi, received a life sentence. He received a royal pardon in 2000. Tibet's father disowned him after the verdict. Islamic fundamentalist groups denounced the verdict, demanding death by stoning or crucifixion rather than firing squad. A march was held after the verdict denouncing sexual assault in Rabat. On September 5, 1993, six months after his trial, at Kanitra Central Prison, Tibet was woken up by the call to Fajr prayer. After praying, he was taken by gendarmes to a car under the pretext that he'll be transferred to another detention center. Instead, he was taken to a forest area. Tied to a pole, a magistrate approved his execution on the spot and asked Tibet to recite the Shahada, the Islamic testimony of faith. Four snipers from the auxiliary forces aimed their rifles at Tibet. The magistrate was rumored to have asked Tibet for any final words. Tibet replied with I am condemned for things that everyone else does except that the people who were sentenced with me have nothing to do with this story. Snipers shot at Tibet in rapid succession. Tibet was later declared dead. His family was not allowed to witness the execution. 
Tibet's family received his body 48 hours later in a coffin that was sealed shut. The family refused to get Tibet's bodies inspected by independent medical examiners. As of 2022, he remains the last person to be executed after a death sentence in Morocco. Thank you for watching Death Row.